How many of you have ever felt like that guy in the video before, right? That there's a battle that's kind of raging and wars happening around us, literally. But the greatest battle we fight, the greatest war that we are in, can I tell you, it's within us. It's the war within. I've been pretty transparent of my journey with mental health and anxiety and some of the things that, that I struggle with and battle against in my own life. And, you know, my biggest thing is I, I know that, I know God is trustworthy. Man, I've seen his faithfulness. I sing songs like that, the God of Jacob and Mary and the faithfulness of God. It's not just something I've read in scripture. It's something I've experienced in my life. I've seen the hand of God in my life. But there's times that because of how I'm wired and the way my mind works that I, I know I can trust God, but I also want to be in control. And I'm an Enneagram 8, right? Come on, right? I'm a type A. I'm a DI on the, on the whatever personality test. Like, that's who I am. It's how I've been wired. And so I have this conflict, and I want control, and I want certainty, but I also want to live a life of faith where I trust God. And so, man, the enemy knows my weak spots. He knows where he can get after me. And the mental health struggles and wrestles that I, that I wrestle with are not uncommon to probably many of you, that we all have our battles, we all have our things that we're fighting, and the state of our world doesn't make things any easier, does it, right? It's a couple of years ago, literally two years ago this weekend, we shut our church down, and this pandemic, you know, it was like, what is this, just a little virus, right? It's not a big deal, right? And then all of a sudden, they canceled, you know, March Madness, and you're like, whoa, wait a second, <laughs> you know? You know, you're like, well, this is a little bit bigger deal, right? And here we are two years later, kind of coming through it. But in the middle of that two years, not only was there a pandemic, there was a very polarizing political season that we're still kind of navigating where our country is very divided and in a lot of different ways. And so the news and the issues, and then it's like just when it seems like we're coming through COVID and cases are down and, you know, things seem to be getting more normal again, literally a war starts in Ukraine. And now that's all you hear in the news and see about is the negativity and the, the problems. And we live in a world that's full of negativity. We live in a world that, that tries to get you to, that with clickbaits online, that, that tries to, to get you to click with fear tactics, right? They don't tell you all the good things happening. They just tell you the bad things happening. The World Health Organization came out with an article just this week that said the global prevalence of anxiety and depression globally increased by 25% through COVID, through this last two years of the pandemic. That literally a quarter of our world is suffering with anxiety and depression in a way that they hadn't before. And can I tell you something today and as we dive into this series that, that you, you are in a war whether you like it or not. That you have an adversary, someone who's against you, the adversary who, although the devil is a defeated foe, he's still an opponent that shouldn't be taken lightly. And he knows your weak spots just like he knows mine. He knows what like, he can get me to focus on. He knows the, the fear and the worry and the anxiety that if I get my mind on, man, it starts this cycle that's difficult to get out of. He knows how to, how to throw those things into my path, into my mind, and he's gonna do the same thing to you. He's going to try to infiltrate your mind with the goal of destroying your soul. But it starts in the mind. You're in a war, and if you aren't prepared to fight, I can tell you something. You will be defeated. 1 Peter 5.8 says this. Stay alert. Look at your neighbor and say, look out. That's what he's saying. Look out. Keep your head on a swivel. Keep your dukes up. Watch out for your great enemy. He says he's great. He has some power. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. But this isn't a physical battle. It is a mental battle that leads to emotional and spiritual stuff. But Ephesians six twelve, Paul says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And the battle begins in your mind. Most of life's battles are won or lost in your mind. It's the battlefield. 
It's the war zone that we find ourselves in. How many of you are thankful for that news today right now? <laughs> but listen, I got to tell you the truth, but here's the good news. Come on. Today I'm preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That there is power in God's word. That this power can transform you and can renew you and change the way you think so that you can win the war within. Look at your neighbor and say, you can win. You can win. Today, some of you, listen, I know in a room this size, people watching online, some of you are feeling defeated when it comes to what's going on mentally, to some of the issues in your life, to some of the challenges that you're facing. But 1 John 4, 4 says, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won victory over those people. How many of you are thankful we're not fighting for victory, we're fighting from victory? When Jesus hung on that cross and defeated death, sin, and the grave forever, when he said, it is finished, he declared victory for all who belong to him. And if you are a child of God today, you are fighting from victory, not for victory. He says, because the spirit who lives inside of you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. That you can win the war within because of the who who lives within you. Jesus has taken up residence in your life. The same power that raised God, Jesus, from the dead now lives inside of you. And if you can learn how to tap into that power source, if you can learn how to focus your mind on the truth of who Jesus is and who you are in him, you can win the war within. The Apostle Paul went through some very difficult times, often imprisoned, beaten, physical health problems, seemed to be under constant attack from the enemy. He says this in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4, as he's kind of equipping us with the tools to win this war within, the war within our minds. He says this, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. There's two words I want to pull out here. First of all, power in the Greek comes from the Greek word dunamis, which we get the English word dynamite. He says that there is explosive power that's up inside of you. Come on, that's good news, that you have power. And the word stronghold he uses here in the Greek is a military stronghold. It is a fortress that they would have deep within kind of the, 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 the walls of the city and that this fortress would be built with reinforced walls up to 20 feet thick and that's where the leaders would stay, the king would stay when there was a battle waging so it would take 20, it would take 20 feet of rock to protect them, right? And he, he uses this word strongly. He says, some of you feel like you're trapped 20 feet deep, that there is a stronghold that has imprisoned you but the dynamite power that God has put in you can break through any barrier in your life, can break through any thought in your life, can break through any situation in your life. So our spiritual enemy, the devil, what he tries to do to get you in prison, to lock you into a stronghold, is he begins to shape your thinking one lie at a time until you're eventually imprisoned by them. He begins to change the way you think. He says things like this. You can't trust them. You can't trust God. You're never going to succeed in this. You're always going to be broke. You're, you're, you're never going to have a good marriage. God doesn't listen to you. If he, do, he does, why? He, he obviously doesn't care. He's not doing anything in your life, right? My life isn't ever going to make a difference. You're always going to be an addict. Your, your dad was. Your grandpa was. You're, you're going to be one too. You can't overcome this thing. You're never going to be able to live a life of freedom in Jesus. And he begins to just bombard you with lies over and over and over again until they begin to shape your thinking, until you begin to believe them. Paul goes on, he says, so we demolish these arguments and every pretension, these lies from the enemy that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, the truth of who God is and who you are, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And we're going to dive into this a little bit more in a moment. But today I want to ask you, do you want to win the war within? 
Because you've got to determine that. I can't determine it for you. I can get up here and hoot and holler and clap my hands and preach a little louder and get, you know, emphasize things a little bit more for you. But until you say, man, I'm tired of being the way I am. I'm tired of thinking this way. I'm tired of feeling trapped by these lies, man. And I want to get free. You can be free if you'll access the dunamis power that's within inside of you. You got to determine I mean, you're going to win the war within. I've been on a journey of asking God to, to do that with me for really about the last six years or so. And as I've really taken steps to overcome anxiety in my life, I've realized through counseling and that I've had it since I was a kid. It looked different. I worried about different things, but I worried even as a kid. I would be fearful all the time of, of thinking that I was going to be left somewhere. I was never left, all right, my parents go to church here. They never abandoned me anywhere. Like, it never happened. But I had this fear in my head of that, hey, and, and I would, like, literally make plans in my mind as a child of, of what I would do if this happened. If that happened, if this happened, I would make these plans. And my counselor has helped me understand that, man, that was, that was control, you were trying to control things. There was uncertainty, and you would try to figure out how to make a plan and how to, how to figure it out on your own. And, and it's taken on different forms as I've aged because I've taken on different responsibilities. But can I tell you something? Most of the mental health issues that we have and the lies that we've believed happened when we were kids. That your brain is formed like until you're like 12-ish, and then it's what you got. And so we have to realize that we can change these things through the power of God's word. But I also want to make it clear, anxiety is not who I am. It's something that I battle. It's not who I am. Don't allow the enemy to put an identity on you that doesn't belong on you. Because that's what he tries to do. He'll try to slap a label on you. He'll try to put labels on you. This is who you are. This is how you've been since you were a kid. You're always going to struggle. This is always how it's going to be. This is who you are. Listen, you are a child of God. You've been equipped and empowered to be more than a conqueror, and you can win the war within. You can. Determine that in your heart. But it begins in the mind. You see, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And scripture and science agree on this. There's cognitive behavior psychology that shows that a lot of problems are the result of toxic thinking. That the problem that they have is a result of the thought that they had. Relational challenges, eating disorders, addictions, some forms of anxiety have all been proven to be a direct result of toxic thinking. Proverbs 23 tells it like this. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That as you think, that is what's going to play out in your life. That your life, the life we have is a reflection of the thoughts that we think. And what we think determines who we become. So if you think you can't, listen, you probably won't. But if you think you can, you probably will. If you dwell on problems, they will overwhelm you. But if you look for solutions, you'll probably find some. If you want to feel like a victim your whole life, you will become one. But if you want to overcome with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can. As you think, so your life will go. The life you have is a reflection of the thoughts you think. So what do you think about the most? Ask yourself that question. Where do most of your thoughts go? What's the default mode of your mind? Are you worried a lot? Think worst case scenario about your kids, about your career, about your money, about your health, right? You get trapped in this cycle of worry and fear or, or do you focus on trusting God and being secure in God's promises that you do the best you can, you trust God with what you can and man, you live a life that's full of his peace? Or are you negative? Are you critical of other people, constantly comparing yourself to others, finding fault in others, discontent with your life, always believing that your life is just gonna be hard and difficult and challenging? Or do you have a positive outlook on life? Life is good. You count your blessings. 
Focus on the good things. Have gra- a grateful heart. Believe the best in people. Know that God has a, has a plan for you, that you are blessed, that God is moving behind the scenes of your life. How, how are you thinking? Because what comes into your mind eventually comes out in your life. No matter what you do, what you have, who you know, what you buy, what car you drive, where you live, where you get to vacation, listen to me. What comes into your mind comes out in your life. And you cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mind. No matter what you have. No matter how good your life is. Because our life moves in the direction of our thoughts. Scientific studies show that for every negative thought you have, it takes three positive thoughts to overcome the one negative. Part of the therapy that I'm learning and growing in is that literally when you have a negative thought, you have to take that thought, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but then you have to then counter that negative thought with three positive thoughts. And this isn't just self-help talk stuff, people. Like, that's not me. Y'all know me good enough. That's not me, right? I'm, I'm saying this is, this is true scientific study which is backed up with scripture. Your life is moving right now in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So do you like where you're going? Do you like the direction that your thoughts are taking you? And if I'm being honest, I I wasn't. And sometimes I'm still not. But I'm committed to engage in the war for my mind. I'm committed to win the war within. I'm in it to win it. I'm in counseling I'm doing intentional mental health exercises on my own. I'm reading books. I'm listening to podcasts. I'm educating myself on how the mind and brain works and what God has to say about that. There's an amazing Christian doctor, Caroline Leaf, who who does amazing work and has written many books and podcasts and apps and things that help you to really understand how the mind works and how God interacts with that. I listen to prayerful meditations. I'm pulling back the layers of of my life and of the issues that I've faced to really get to the root of the problem. Because can I tell you something? The worry, the fear, the anxiety, the depression, those are just symptoms of a greater problem. And like I've said, most of it will take you back to your childhood. That's how far you gotta be willing to go to really win the war within. So I want to challenge you to be in it to win it with me. Not to allow the enemy to keep you captive any longer. To imprison you with lies any longer. Because that is the warfare, that is the weapon of warfare that the enemy uses. is lies. And you got to understand what your opponent's going to be using against you in order to defeat your opponent. John 8, Jesus said this, he was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of all lies. And so the first thing that you have to do to win the war within, to take back your mind, is you need to identify the biggest lie holding you back. And I use the word biggest because there's probably multiple, but you need to figure out what is the biggest lie that you have believed that's holding you back from all that God has for you. What lie has locked you in? I'm not good enough. My past is too bad. I I can't trust anybody. I'm always going to battle weight. I'm never going to be good with money. I'm always going to be an addict. Won't be able to do anything good with my life. God is is, is going to let me down if I trust him. I'm going to continue to to live in fear and worry and allow that, that to get into my heart and life. What is it for you? What lie is the enemy locking you in with? You need to identify what that is. And many of you probably already know what it is. You see, negative thoughts, Dr. Caroline Leaf has literally changed the chemical makeup in your brain. That the thought has the power to change the chemical makeup in your brain. That a toxic thought creates a neurochemical change in our body. Every thought does, whether negative or positive. So if you think a negative, toxic thought is going to create that in your body, you will literally see symptoms of that thought come out in your body. A positive thought, you get a very rewarding neurotransmitter. It releases a chemical called dopamine. Anybody ever heard of dopamine? It's dope. It's a legal dope for you. It's legal drug that literally your brain will produce and release this chemical that gives you a good natural high. Someone compliments you, dopamine, right? Someone 
you know, you get a promotion at work, dopamine. Your kids are doing well in school, dopamine, right? You get these dopamine hits. That's why people get addicted to things is because of how their body responds to what they're putting into it. The same works with our thought life. If you think upon positive things, man, it is going to play out in your life. Caroline Leaf says that there's billions of what they call neural pathways in your brains. They're literally like roads in your brain. And the more often you think a thought, the easier it is to think that thought again. And eventually you think it enough to where it becomes your default. This is the science side of it. I want to show you a picture of the oval, if you guys know what this is. It's at the Ohio State University. And when you first look at that, you're like, wow, that looks pretty cool. But Man, did the, the, the architect struggle with trying to figure out which sidewalks to put in, right? Because it just doesn't seem, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. I mean, it kind of looks cool, but it's just a bunch of triangles. And what, is that, what does that really look like? And, and what happened here, if you don't know the, the story behind this, is that there were pathways that were natural routes that the students took before they paved it. So students figured out the quickest route to get to where they wanted to go, and then eventually, the, the grass was completely worn down. It became a dirt path in the middle of grass. And then they just decided to pave the path that the students already walked. That's how the oval was created. And listen, this is what happens in our brain. Some of you have embraced a lie. You've thought upon this lie. You've embraced this lie. And it's literally become truth to you. You believe it. It's not true. But you believe that it's true, that the lie has become permanently paved in your physical brain. It's become your default path that you go on. It's become a stronghold, Paul says, of the enemy, that he's infiltrated your mind. He's got you to buy in and to believe a lie, and it becomes the natural path that you go down. So there's some science. Let me give you some scriptures. Romans 12, 1 through 2, Paul says it this way. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of, of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So we are to offer our lives to God. Then he says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So don't conform to the world, be transformed. And he doesn't say you're transformed by coming to church, which is, but it's a good thing. And y'all made it on daylight savings time, although the 8.30, I said they got extra credit in heaven, a little, couple more wall, houses in their mansion, rooms in their mansion in heaven. But, but he says you're not transformed by attending church or these other things. You're transformed into who God created you to be by changing the way you think. He says, and when you begin to change the way you think, then you're gonna be able to understand what God's will is for your life. So if you have a negative and critical mindset and attitude, what you're doing is, is you're creating unhealthy, unhelpful neuro pathways in your brain. That starts out as just a path where the grass gets beat down, but eventually, as you think upon it again and again, it's permanently paved. And so Paul says, you have to renew your mind. You have to create a new pathway in your brain. And that takes hard work. That takes intentional effort. That takes counseling. That takes educating yourself. It takes spending time learning and developing and reading your, the scripture and getting it into your heart and mind. And, and so we got to change our habits, right? And some of you, if you've ever had a frustrating day at work and you, you, you get home and you, you're just mad and you're angry and the kids frustrate you, you yell at the kids. Instead, you figure out a new pathway and you say, you know what, I'm going to pause before I go in the door. I'm going to pray. And the first thing I'm going to do before I say anything else, I'm just going to get everybody hugs. I'm just going to hug everybody create a new neural pathway, right? Feel bad about your self-image. You, 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 you don't 
feel good about the way you, you look and how you feel. And so instead, man, instead of comfort eating and, and continuing down those things, you, you instead you start walking. You start figuring out a way to work out. You start listening to podcasts and, and praying, right? You're bored instead of, instead of just scrolling through Instagram and becoming jealous of everybody and comparing yourself to everybody else, right? Instead you, of getting on Instagram, you open up your Bible app and start praying. Like it, it takes intentional effort to do this. And to think in a different way, you have to forge a new pathway in your brain. This is the science part of this. And the more you walk that path, the easier it becomes to travel. It becomes paved like the oval. So the more you stay off the old path, the weaker it becomes. becomes a lot easier to avoid the toxic thought that the enemy puts into your mind. And what you feed will grow. What you starve will die. This is so true. I'm telling you, I mean, some of you, you just need to change some simple things. These all play into what comes into your mind. Quit watching the news. Just quit. Why? Why are you watching it? If it impacts you, and it creates fear and worry and anxiety because of the uncertainty of what's happening, just quit watching it. Ask someone that you know, hey, how's things going over there in the world? How, what's going on in Ukraine? They'll give you a snippet, right? That's all you need, right? Some of you, you just need to get off Instagram. You need to get off social media. It's toxic to you. You need to quit watching that stuff. You need to quit putting, putting those, watching those movies, listening to that music. What we put into our mind eventually comes out in our life. You cannot work a while around it, right? What you what you, what you reap is what you're, what you sow is what you're going to reap. So if you want to change that, you got to change what you're feeding in your life. Begin to feed on the word of God because what you starve out will eventually die. What you feed will grow. So you got to identify the biggest lie holding you back. Just one. Take it one step at a time. Identify one of them, the biggest one right now that's imprisoned you, that's locked you in. And then you got to defeat that lie. But listen, you cannot defeat what you're not willing to define. You gotta identify it, you gotta name it. And I've been in counseling now for a couple years and it, it, it's literally just within the last couple months that I've really gotten to the root of my issue. It's taken that long to put in the work to really get the healing that I need. So you gotta, you gotta name it, you gotta identify what the lie is and then you need to name the truth that demolishes the lie. Paul said, we demolish arguments and every pretension, every lie that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. It's a war. The word that Paul uses here in the Greek for, for take captive was literally a war term that they would use. It would mean to capture with sword or spear is what they would say. This is the word that he uses. And so when he says this, that you, you, you take captive the lie, you identify the lie, and then you literally grab it by the throat and put a spear up to its throat. You take it captive and you make it obedient to Christ, to the truth. I know you're like, man, this is kind of graphic. This is the war language that Paul is using. This is the war that's within you. And if you don't treat it as such, I'm telling you, the enemy will continue to whoop your tail. So what is the lie holding you back? And then you figure it out. When it comes in, when he starts whispering that lie, you're never good enough. No, you catch it. You take it captive. You pull out the sword of the spirit. And the word that Paul uses for the sword of the spirit in Ephesians when he's going through the armor of God is the rhema word of God, which is the audibly spoken word of God. Not in your mind, out through your mouth. And so you take it captive. And when that enemy comes and lies, you say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You say, I'm not good enough, and you're right, I'm not, but I serve the one who is. That's how you defeat the lie with the truth. It's the sword of the spirit. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. My lie, again, the control, the uncertainty, the things that I struggle with, that the enemy starts going, oh, something bad could happen. 
man, you don't know what that is. You better be careful. What if your kid got that? What if this happened? What if this happens to you? Then what would happen to your kids, right? This is the the lies that the enemy hits me with, and it's probably different for you than it is me because he knows my weak spots and he knows yours. But when those lies come, man, I got to go, you know what? Here's the truth that I know. God is sovereign. I'm not in control, but he is. I don't know what the future holds, but I know the one who holds the future. And I am safe and secure in him. Man, this world is not my home. Heaven is my home. And when my life ends on this world, I know exactly where I'm going. And if I were to exit this world in a prematurely in a way that brings fear to me because of what could possibly happen to my family, the same God that's going to see me through it is going to see them through it. You see how you begin to defeat the lies with the truth, right? He tells me that I can be strong and courageous, that he's with me, that I can't do it on my own, but I can do anything with the one who lives inside of me. And this doesn't just happen one time on Sunday morning, friends. This happens multiple times a day. But you want to know why many of you are getting your tail whooped by the enemy? You don't even know the word. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said to those who believed in him, John 8, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Can you remain faithful to a teaching that you don't know? That's not a trick question. No, you can't. So he's telling his disciples, they will know you because of your obedience to me, that you follow me, you follow my teachings. And he says, and the truth, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So first step is being obedient to Jesus. Following Jesus is the first step. Then it's knowing the truth of what he says. The truth is both a a person and the scripture. It's knowing Jesus and knowing the word. But you can't know it if you don't read it. I tell people this all the time. You got to read it, you got to remember it, then you got to recite it. Right? You can't recall something unless you've committed it to memory. And some of you, man, the enemy is, is beating you up, imprisoning you with lies because you don't know the truth that defeats the lie. And so you gotta get in the word. You gotta spend time with Jesus multiple times getting the word of God in you. Because the enemy will try to get you to trust what you feel, to believe what you feel. And I wanna tell you, believe what you know, not what you feel. Because my feelings, I promise you, They can be all over the place. But the truth, it never changes. The truth of who he is and who I am. So you gotta know the word. Right now we're in 40 days of focus. Maybe you didn't hop in, it's a journey through Lent. About two, almost two weeks into it. But I would encourage you to to get in. What are we doing? We're reading the word as a church. We've given you plans. There's a YouVersion Bible app. If you haven't downloaded the Bible app, download it. thousands of Bible plans right on your phone, right on your iPad that you can listen to, that you can read, that you can get the word of God into you. God has given you everything you need to be free, he said. And it starts with knowing the truth. The band's coming and we're gonna close out. I was thinking about preparing this, preparing this message and my mother-in-law uh, when, I would, when I first met Jess, uh, her family was in the church that I went to work at, and we were friends ever before we dated, and I would, their family hosted a, a, a small group, a life group for kids in the home, and so I'd go over there and hang out with kids and get to know them, and I can remember just walking around the house, and, and I started calling them sticky note scripture, but Jess's mom would put scripture up all over the place. Like, you know, you, you'd go in the bathroom and take a seat, and you'd be like, oh, there's a scripture right there, you know? It's like something like push through. You're going to get through it. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, some of you will get that later. But there'd be a scripture. Jess is going to be so mad that I said it. Uh, and, and there'd be, you, you'd go to the sink to, to wash your hands, and there'd be a scripture. And you'd go somewhere else, and there'd be a scripture. You'd open the fridge. There's scripture. And she put scripture everywhere. Quotes. And it was like she was putting the, the truth all around her. And I don't know, they, they would change from time to time, I'm guessing because that was the, the truth that she needed in that season. But I'm telling you, man, you gotta, you gotta get the promises, you gotta post the promises of God everywhere that you can. You gotta keep them in front of you at all times. 
I don't know where you need to put it. I don't know what you're going through, but you need to identify the biggest lie that's holding you back right now. What is it that's holding you back? What has imprisoned you for too long? And then discover the truth that will set you free. Paul says we take captive every thought. This is a war term. Man, when it comes into your mind, you don't mess with it. You don't play around with it. You don't wait till later. You take it captive right there in the moment, and you make it obedient to Christ. The enemy cannot defeat the word of God. He cannot, he is, he is powerful, but he is not as powerful as the one who lives inside of you. That God is putting his spirit in you, and if you will get the word in your heart and recall it and recite it and speak it to the enemy, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So when he tells you you're never going to be able to accomplish anything, your life will never, you'll never get through this season, man, you say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When I am weak, he is strong. When he says you're always going to be miserable and unhappy, you say the joy of the Lord will be my strength, that God is working all things together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose, right? I feel alone. I feel like I'm never going to find someone. God is with me. God will never leave me. I'm always going to struggle with, fill in the blank. You are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. You're not going to be a good parent. You're not going to be a good spouse. Man, what God has called you to, he will equip you to do. He knew your child before you ever even thought about them. He has a plan and a purpose for their life, and he has entrusted them to you. And he'll help you when you need help. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. What comes into your mind will come out in your life. And you cannot have a positive life with a negative mind. So capture the lie, replace it with the truth. Sounds simple, but I'm telling you, it is a war. Your opponent is relentless. He's gonna keep firing those arrows. He's gonna keep coming after you but I'm telling you, greater is he that is within you than he who is within the world. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is now living inside of you. And Jesus told his disciples, if you lean into that, if you lean into the truth, if you lean into my spirit, I will empower you and you will be able to do even greater things than I did. Do you believe it? Because it's the truth. And if you know the truth, truth will set you free why would you stay locked in a prison when Jesus has given you the keys to be free the truth is the word and it's a person you will know the truth his word and know him personally you need to know both I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes and if you're here today you're watching online and you were to answer that question honestly, like, do you know Jesus? I didn't say, do you believe in Jesus? Jesus said the demons believe and even shudder and fear when they hear my name, but that's not what's going to make the difference. It's not believing, it's knowing Jesus. It's having a relationship with him. It's putting your trust in him. It's putting him in a position of authority in your life, his word in a place of authority in your life. It's not picking and choosing parts of the Bible that you want to apply to your life, you submit and surrender yourself to who he is and who the word claims he is and who you are in him. And so today, do you need to know Jesus? Do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? That's step one. So if you're here today and you say, man, I'm I'm not in right relationship with God. Maybe you're watching online and you were just going through the internet today, hopped on and and, and you stumbled upon this. I don't know where you're at and what's going on with you, but I know this, that God wants to speak to you too. So today, if that's where you're at, it starts with us surrendering our lives to him. The Bible says sin separated us from God, but God so loved you and me that he sent Jesus into this world and that the cross of Jesus Christ built a bridge so that you could know God. And if you'll surrender your life to him, if you'll repent, turn from your sin and turn towards God, Man, he will forgive you, cleanse you of all of your sin. He'll take up residence in your life and begin to empower you to live the life that he created.
created you to live. So today, if that's you and you know I'm away from God, I don't know God, and I need God in my life big time, man. I'm, I'm in a battle, and I need to get plugged into the source of my power and strength today. If that's you, and you need to surrender to God, I want to pray for you. But as a sign of surrender to him, would you just lift your hand right now? Say, Kyle, would you pray for me? That's where I'm at today. And I don't know God like that. Thank you. If you're watching online, just tell God that right now. Say, God, he's talking to me. Anyone else? Say, Kyle, pray for me. Thank you. He loves you, friend. He's waiting for you. He wants to help. Invite him in today. Anyone else? Amen. Thanks. Church family, would you pray this with those who are praying this today? And everybody just repeat this after me. Say, dear Jesus, today I invite you in. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you're the son of God, that you died for me so I can live for you. I surrender all that I am to you and your plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. Yeah, you give God praise this morning. Praise God. Here's the reality that I know today. Some of you are in a dark place. Depression is set in, constantly worried, full of anxiety, living in a place of fear. Listen, you need God today. I pray that his Holy Spirit would reveal to you, what is it? What is the lie that you've believed that's entrapped you here? That's gotten you to this place that the enemy has used as a stronghold to imprison you. And then that, the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit, man, would begin to break those chains and break through those barriers and those walls that the enemy has set up. But just ask God, God, reveal it so we can heal it. Name it so you can defeat it. Say, God, I need you to renew my mind. I need you to change the way I think. God, help me to get your word deep in my heart. Today, I want you to know that God sees you. He sees you right now. He hears you. He cares. He's with you. And James gave us this promise. He says that when you draw close to him, he'll draw even closer to you. And today, if you're in that spot where you go, man, Kyle, I want to be free. And I want to get past this place. I want to get out of this prison that God has, that the enemy has put me in. I believe God wants to set you free today. And as you confess your need for God, as you open your heart up to him, he is going to do only what he can do. Father, we thank you that you are faithful to your word. We're thankful for the promises that your word gives us today. So we cling to it now. And Lord, we open our hearts to you. And I pray today, God, for those who are in a, difficult place God that you would minister to them in a real way God we invite your Holy Spirit to come in Jesus name